Hi. Now here we have an example where we've got a particle moving in a vertical circle on the outside of a sphere. So just take you through this question. It's got quite a lot of good points which we can discuss throughout the video. So we've got this particle P here of mass m kilograms and it's slightly disturbed from rest at the highest point on the surface of a smooth fixed sphere of radius a meters and center O. The particle starts to move downwards on the surface. While P remains on the surface, OP makes an angle of theta radians with the upward vertical and has angular speed of omega radians per second. The sphere exerts a force of magnitude r newtons on P and we've got to show that a omega squared equals 2g times all of 1 minus cos theta. And then we've got to find some other bits in the later sections which we'll run through. Now generally when you're working with questions that involve circular motion in a vertical plane you end up having to use energy considerations. And that's what's going to happen in this first question here. So what we tend to do is take the lowest point in the problem, which will be where the particle is here in this general position. We take that as the gravitational potential energy equaling zero, that level there. So if I was to draw, say, a dotted line across here, all right, then we'll have that as where the gravitational potential energy is zero. And we'll label the highest point here where motion starts as A, and then we'll look at this position here, and I'll call that B. Okay, so we've got that. So what we're going to say is essentially the energy at A will equal the energy at level B. And we've got to decide what kind of energies are involved. Well, the particle was released from rest at the top here. So I'll just put an arrow there and say that's going at zero meters per second. All right, zero meters per second. And at this point here at B, the particle has a velocity which is at a tangent to this radius here. So it's going to move, be moving in this direction here. And we'll just say that that's V meters per second. So for part one, then by energy considerations, we can think of what kind of energy exists at A. Well, it's purely gravitational potential energy. It's got height above this zero level here. There's no kinetic energy because it was released from rest. So the gravitational potential energy at A must equal the energy that we've got at B. Well, it's lost its gravitational potential energy because we've set this level to be zero, but it's gained a speed here, so it must have kinetic energy. So therefore, that will equal the kinetic energy at B. Some of you might argue the equation is the loss in gravitational potential energy equals the gain in kinetic energy. Either way, we're going to end up with the same equation. And that equation will be that the gravitational potential energy at A is just going to be mg times the height here. Let's just say we call that distance there h, okay? So that's going to be mgh, and that's going to equal the kinetic energy at B, which is going to be half mv squared. Now as for h, We've got to express h in terms of a and theta. And that's fairly straightforward if we look at this triangle in here, this right angle triangle. I can see that this side is the adjacent side. We've got the hypotenuse here. So this length here is going to be a cos theta. So mark that in as a cosine theta. That's that distance 
from there to there. So for H, I've got O to A here. That's the radius A. So it's just going to be A minus A cos theta. And therefore, we've got then Mg. H will be A minus A cos theta. I can factorise that and write it as A bracket 1 minus cosine of theta. A minus A cos theta then. And that's going to equal the kinetic energy, a half m times v squared. Now you should also know that v is related to the angular speed. v always equals omega r. So I'll just put a box around that just to remind you of that result, okay, that you should be familiar with. So I can substitute omega r, well it won't be r, it'll be a here, so I can write here instead of v squared, this will be omega squared a squared. Now I can see that the m's cancel out in this, and to head towards this result, I can see that if we've got to get a omega squared as the subject, all I've got to do is times by 2. And I can also cancel out one of the a's as well. So, therefore, what we've got is a omega squared equals 2g times all of 1 minus cosine theta. And that's what we had to show. Okay, so that's the end of that part there and move on now to part two and in part two we've got to find an expression for r that's the contact force in terms of mg and theta so got to mark on these forces acting on the particle and so we've got r that contact force is going to be out in that direction let's say it's r newtons We've got the weight of the particle, that's going to act downwards, so that's going to be mg newtons. They're the only two forces acting on the particle. But because it's moving in a circular path, there is always an acceleration, remember, that acts towards the centre. So I'll mark that acceleration in here. It's about the only room I've got by the looks of it. Okay, so I'll mark that acceleration there. And remember, acceleration is equal to v squared over the radius. Or using this particular formula, you can see it's omega squared a. You should be familiar with that result for acceleration when you're given angular speed. Okay, so uh, we've got that. What else will we need? Well, we're going to be resolving in a moment. Okay, so what we need to do is see where this angle theta acts around here. And you can see we've got alternate angles here. We've got two parallel lines. So that angle in there will also be theta. So I'll just mark it in there. So when it comes to working with the forces, we're going to resolve, going to resolve in towards the center of the circle. So if I say here, resolve in the direction P to O, okay, then we've got the force acting towards the center, which is going to be the component of the weight, which will be mg cosine theta. So you've got mg cosine theta. And then we've got minus the reaction from the surface there of the sphere. And that's going to equal the mass times the acceleration. So you've got the mass is m and the acceleration is omega squared a. All right, so put that in, omega squared a. And if we're to get r in terms of mg and theta, then... If I make R the subject of the formula here, just rearrange it, we've got R equals mg cos theta and then minus m omega squared a. Now I can pick up on the fact that we've got omega squared a from the result we had in part one, so I can substitute it into there. So we've got R equals mg cosine of theta minus m times 2g 
times 1 minus cos theta. So 2g, 1 minus cosine of theta. And then all I've got to do is expand this and just group my terms together. So I'm going to get mg cos theta here. I can see I've got plus 2mg cos theta there. So we've got a total then of 3mg cos theta and minus 2mg. And I could leave it like that, I suppose, or I could pull out a factor of mg here. So if I do that, we've got mg and then bracket 3 cosine of theta minus 2. OK, so that's that part. Now, in the last part of this question, let's just mark it in as part 3. We've got to find theta at the instant that P loses contact with the surface of the sphere. And this is quite a common question that you're going to get with questions like this. And that's going to be when R equals 0. As soon as it just leaves the sphere, then R will be equal to 0. There'll be no contact force. So if we just put here when R equals 0, then all I've got to do is look at this equation, this general equation we've got for that contact force R, and just set it equal to 0. Well, that would mean that this factor here, 3 cos theta minus 2, would have to equal 0. So that would mean that cosine theta would equal 2 thirds. So we can find that angle, OK, just by taking the inverse cosine now of both sides. So remember, we're working in radians. Theta is given in radians here. OK, theta is radians. So therefore, inverse cosine that. Make sure you're in radians mode. And we end up with 0 0.8410 and so on. OK, so if we round that, say, to three significant figures, we end up with theta equaling 0 0.841 radians. OK, I'll just put rads there. And that's given to three significant figures, 3SF, OK? Now, the question might go on and say, what kind of speed does it leave the sphere at? Well, that's easy. Just going to carry on with this method here. You'd have set r equal to 0. You'd found out what theta is, or even cosine theta here. And you could work from this particular equation, substitute cosine theta, two-thirds into here, work out what omega is, and use this equation here. So you can see it's very useful, v equals omega r. You could then find out what v was. So many other questions that you can ask around this kind of problem. OK, so I uh, hope this gives you an, some idea anyway on how to handle this type of problem.